Hello everyone, this is John Barron with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our MBA Profile of the Week, sponsored by Gatehouse Admissions. We have with us today the founder of Gatehouse, Liza Wheel, to evaluate our candidate. She's an interesting candidate. She calls herself Ms. Indian Entrepreneur. She's a 26-year-old Indian-American female with a CPA and five years of work experience. Two is an auditor, two is a financial analyst at an e-commerce startup, and one year as a senior finance analyst at a music streaming company. So she graduated with uh, a degree in economics and accounting from UC Santa Barbara. The GPA was 3.3, the GMAT, 750, big GMAT. And she is aiming for an MBA at Kellogg, her first choice school. But she's also applying to Stanford, Wharton, Harvard, London Business School, Columbia, and UT's Macomb School of Business. Liza, what do you make of the candidate? There are lots of things I like about Miss India, uh, Indian entrepreneur. Um, first off, I think I love the blend of her experience in traditional audit at BDO. She had two years there. She got promoted twice, says she did really well. But then she did something awesome, which was trusted her gut and decided to make a pretty big move and join a startup. Um, and, and I just think that takes a lot of you know, guts and a lot of belief in yourself and the ability to recognize what you want. So I was excited to see that. Yeah. And now she's at a, a new uh, venture, a new exciting uh, place in the you know music industry and learning about technology. So I think her professional um, experience is pretty compelling. Um, I have some caveats to add about that, but as a just the pre-MBA experience, I think it's gonna be additive in the Kellogg classroom for sure. Okay. And by the way, love her stats. I mean, I love her 750. Her 33 is a little lower than I would like it to be, um, but that 750 is certainly going to help. 750 Jumbo G map. Uh, her work experience in three different places at three different kinds of companies uh, looks really good. Um, is it enough for uh, Kellogg? And what about Stanford, Wharton, and Harvard? What about the choice of these schools, London, Columbia, UT, Macombs? You know, if you think about Kellogg's questions, they ask about a time that you demonstrate leadership, they ask about your values. I think if she can really point to some impact, and even for example, the um, her story of connecting BDO with the startup, maybe that's enough, maybe not, but maybe there's other things she can draw from. I think if she can really show herself as a leader who can who can drive results and, and work with others, I think she's got a very solid shot. At, at Kellogg, and she should absolutely go for it. Yeah. Um, regarding the other schools, I think GSB, Stanford, GSB, Wharton, HBS, I think that they are going to be elusive. Um, not to say she shouldn't go for them if she really has her heart on it, but they're just so competitive. And uh, I, I would think that her efforts would be better spent on things and schools that are still going to help her reach her goals, but are a little bit more um, in her zone. Um, I think London Business School, great school. I think it's great for entrepreneurship as well. It's a good spot for her, but she's going to have to make the case of why London, what's the appeal there, and does she really want um, to have that international experience? If she does and if she can prove it, keep it on the list. Um, I also love UT McCombs. A lot of venture going on in Austin these days. It's just a great space for anybody thinking of, you know, technology and, and startups. So I applaud that. The two schools I'd want to see on our list really are I'd want to see Haas and I'd want to see Sloan. Sloan, my alma mater. I've got a soft spot for it for sure. Um, but <laughs> those schools are really focused on technology, startups, and, and really building entrepreneurs of the future. So they're, they're not easy, in no way, tiny, tiny acceptance rates at those schools as well. But I think she should be considering them on her, uh, on her short list. Yeah, and the 750 will put her uh, at the, on the top list of consideration. I mean, could get her an interview for sure, right? Yep, I think so. I think so. You know, when you look at a profile like this, what I like to say is, what could have been different to say, go for Harvard, Stanford, Wharton? And I, I, it kind of starts with 
um, UC Santa Barbara in a way. Now I'm really nitpicking, okay? UC, UC Santa Barbara is a really good school and it's gotten a lot more selective more recently, but in the UC system, it's not UCLA, it's not Berkeley, it's certainly not a, pub, uh, a, a public Ivy or, um, or an Ivy school. Uh, the 3.3, as you point out, is a little bit low for the caliber of schools that she's applying to. BDO is not, you know, big four if you're going to go into auditing. And I am nitpicking here. Um, and in terms of selectivity of jobs, I think, you know, to be at a music streaming company, if it's a major company, that would be a selective job and a real coup. She did, she did get promoted twice in that um, first job and once in the second job. So that's really solid. But um, those little nit nits can make a big difference uh, when you're competing with an incredible group of candidates, right? I do think the um, Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton for the number of factors that you brought up, um, as well as maybe a little, some changes in their career, I, I think will be difficult, um, you know, be elusive, as I said. She's got some really nice extras, okay? She's a board member at an arts nonprofit, has been so for a year and a half. She's been a youth mentor for another privileged, privileged child in San Francisco for a year and a half. And she's on the steering committee member at work for diversity and women's group. Um, those are all good, admirable extras. Uh, but at a Stanford in particular, you need a little bit more, right? I mean, you need some more of the special sauce uh, that Stanford looks for because they're really picking and choosing from among the absolute best in the world. Look, there might be some some really strong stories in the way she's affected change. Maybe there's a history of her involvement in an arts organization that we don't know about. But if that doesn't exist, I agree with you. It's just not enough of that, you know, really going above and beyond and, and, and changing the world around you that Stanford is going to be looking for. Liza, thank you so much. Great to see you again. Likewise, John. Always a pleasure. All right. You've been listening to Liza Wheel of Gatehouse Admissions, the sponsor of our NBA Watch Profile of the Week. And for all of you out there, you know, here's a terrific candidate. Let's face it, 750 GMAT, uh, that pretty much puts her in the 99th percentile of all test takers in the world. She's had three jobs, all of them good jobs where she's had a record of accomplishment. Two promotions in the first, another promotion in the second, and now she's with a major music streaming company as a financial analyst. Great uh, track record there. Uh, just a few little nits that, however, that may make a Stanford, a Harvard, a Wharton elusive. Um, Liza thinks she's right on target for Kellogg. I kind of think that too, and I wish her the best of success. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. You've been watching our MBA Profile of the Week, sponsored by Gatehouse Admissions. Mm -hmm.